Hello everyone, my name is Charlie Turner. I work for Egalia and I'm going to give a status update on the Vulcan video ecosystem. So for those of you who might not be familiar, Vulcan video is a video acceleration API exposed as a set of extensions to the Vulcan standard. Um, several APIs have been proposed um, across the convenience control portability space. Uh, the ones that tend to offer high performance are often locked into a specific vendor or are not particularly portable. And those ones that try and offer both performance and portability have struggled to gain wide industry adoption. So the hope here is that we can piggyback on Vulcan's momentum across the industry to try and solve these problems. So the, the API is vendor and platform agnostic. It's stateless. So a lot of the heavy lifting is pushed to the application rather than the driver. Um, it offers very fine-grained control over processing and scheduling of video operations. And thanks to Vulcan's design, it's possible to implement highly parallel frame processing across both the CPU and the GPU with a very fine-grained control of the synchronization between frame operations, both of which are absolutely critical for good performance. It also seamlessly integrates with the Vulcan graphics and presentation layers um, with copula sharing into both of those subsystems and it's designed to work on the small, smallest of systems to the most powerful servers and some uh, uses of these extensions some applications you could say the ability to use compressed videos um, as an efficient streaming source for data to be mapped onto 3d geometry and that's useful in game engines desktop compositors things like that the new hotness of generative AI models uses a lot of um, encode and decode operations that can be fruitfully accelerated with these sorts of accelerations. Um, when you're decoding video, you're often dealing with per pixel motion vectors, and this information is useful for a number of real-time rendering algorithms, such as deep learning supersampling, uh, denoising of ray tracing. Um, you've got your typical use cases of streaming which is obviously useful to offload um, various GPU filters that you might want to run on decompressed frame data um, can all be kept in the GPU memory. And there's also applications um, in immersive experiences like light fields and uh, extended reality and other such topics. So 2022 last year, I would say, was the year of finalizing the codec independent APIs, so building a, a really solid foundation to add further uh, codecs and other extensions. So going into 2023, we had this, this good foundation. AVC and HEVC decode was finalized and shipped. Um, the focus there was just simply due to the market share of those codecs, so nothing particularly philosophical. AV1 is in active development right now as we speak, and VP9 is on the roadmap. Uh, one problem we did have was in the CTS. It turns out that parsing bit streams is a pretty tricky problem. And the way that was initially approached was to incorporate a binary library that caused a lot of problems for users of the CTS. So at Agalia, we, we tidied that up. NVIDIA kindly released their parsers in source form, which is a nice self-contained set of files for, for doing bitstream parsing. And we've also extended the coverage of ABC and HGVC significantly. And 2023's focus, going in towards the end of it, is to finalize the ENCODE APIs for ABC and HEVC, as well as working on some um, other codec extensions. Uh, to give you a bit of a flavor, this is still quite provisional. We're focusing more on correctness rather than performance right now, but already we're seeing fairly strong signs here. So I took a fairly popular test vector here, the Sintel track. Um, this is in the ABC High profile. And FFmpeg has already implemented uh, the Vulkan video extensions, and they were getting about a 2x speed up versus VA API, which is another popular um, acceleration API in the, in, in the industry. And the NVIDIA sample app, which is um, sort of a, an example of how to use the extensions, was getting 3x on, on top of Vulkan, so you know, 5 to 6x uh, on what is currently out there. And there's um, some provisional frame timings up here. Um, they're, they're a little bit, take them with a bit of a pinch of salt because uh, timeline queries aren't actually supported on the decode queues, but this is what I was getting on a 3060 Ti GPU. 
Um, I'd say 4.3 milliseconds for 4K frames is, is pretty decent, but the speed of light there is around about a millisecond. Um, in terms of how, what are the drivers looking like, so for uh, AVC and HEVC, uh, the open source drivers here, the Intel Anvil driver is completely passing the CTS, looking great. RADV is, is pretty, pretty close, it's just one test failing on a pretty weird case. And the proprietary drivers from NVIDIA and AMD are, are passing on Windows and Linux. Uh, there's also um, an AV1 extension, it's in the form of a Mesa vendor extension. The Kronos version is, is in works, it's cooking. And uh, if you're familiar with the Fluster test suite, there's a lot of quite complicated test cases in there. And for a, a hardware accelerated API, getting that kind of pass rate in Fluster is actually, is pretty respectable. Uh, one of the best pass rates I've seen um, with the RADV driver. Um, the community adoption, am I out of time? Sorry, so the community has adopted this. It's in FFmpeg 6.1. It's going to be coming in GStreamer. Check out that Wicked en Engine blog post. Uh, we're going to be working on AV1, VP9. It's really difficult to use this ex extension, so we're hoping to create libraries to ease that. There's some problems on Android that if anyone knows about it, please come and talk to me, and there's much more going on. Bunch of references if you want to get involved. Thank you.